every hour, four people die in a car crash. That amounted to 37,133 lives lost in 2017 alone. In the case of almost 50% of these casualties, the occupants of the car were unbuckled. According to a study done by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, 14,955 lives were saved by wearing seatbelts. So if seatbelts save lives, why isn't everyone wearing them? In New Hampshire, if you're over 18, there's no law that states that you have to wear a seatbelt. As a result of this, more people in New Hampshire drive unbuckled, which can lead to serious injury and even death. Our home state of New Hampshire may cause bias due to the fact that we are the only state in the U.S. that does not require seatbelts after you turn 18. But the other states have first and second degree seatbelt laws, and because of this, we are worried for drivers across the U.S. Now, don't believe a seatbelt can really save your life? Here's some signs that could change your mind. Our essential question was, should everyone be required to wear a seatbelt while driving or riding in a car no matter the age? We believe that everyone should wear a seatbelt due to many science-related factors. The law of conservation of momentum states that momentum cannot be created or destroyed unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. When the brakes are slammed on a car, the force due to friction overpowers the applied force, which stops the momentum of the car. Inertia, which is a resistance to change in motion, causes any person in the car to continue moving forwards at the speed they were already moving. Usually, the seatbelt stops you from obtaining serious injuries such as broken spines, broken necks, and death. But, if you are not wearing a seatbelt, you will either fly forwards and crash through the windshield and most probably die, or if you're in the back seat, crash into the seat in front of you and get seriously injured. This can all be represented by this force diagram. This represents the split second of when the brakes are slammed. It shows that the force due to friction of 8,560 newtons overpowers the applied force of 4,770 newtons. The arrows on the top and bottom represent the force due to gravity and force normal balancing out, which just means that the car is staying on the ground and not being pulled through to the center of the earth. Newton's first law of motion is also called the law of inertia, and inertia plays a key part in what we're advocating for. When someone slams on the brake of their car, they fly forward because their body is resisting a change in motion, and they want to keep traveling at the speed that they were already traveling. This change in motion is caused by the friction under the tires overpowering the applied force of the pedals. When someone flies forward, when the brakes are slammed in the car, if they are not wearing a seatbelt, they can fly out of their seat and crash through the window shield. If they are wearing a seatbelt, it acts as an unbalanced force and prevents the person from staying in motion. Newton's second law of motion can be related back to our project by stating that children in the back seats of the vehicles need to be wearing a seatbelt at all times. This is because it's much easier for a small child of 75 pounds to fly forwards than it is for an adult of 178 pounds. This is because the net force that's carrying the child forward will have less magnitude than a force carrying the adult. This is because since one mass is smaller than the other, and since F equals M times A, then the change in mass makes the overall force bigger and the adult than the adult and the smaller for the child, the impulse acted upon the driver's seat is also changed drastically between when an adult hits it and when a child hits it. Let's say that the mass of an eight-year-old child is 25.8 kilograms. The child is sitting behind the driver without a seatbelt when suddenly the driver slams on the brakes when traveling at 75 miles per hour. The child's velocity is 33.528 meters per second because the inertia causes the child to continue moving at the speed it was already moving. If we use impulse equals mass times change of velocity, then we get that the impulse that the child hit the chair with is 865.0224 newtons times seconds. Now, if there is an adult in the child's position with a mass of 78.6 kilograms and the same velocity, then its impulse would be 2635 newtons times second. Therefore, there is much more damage done to the driver if an adult is in the back seat due to a dramatic increase in impulse than it is if a child is in the back seat. For Newton's third law, the action would be someone slamming on the brake, and the reaction would be someone slamming into the seatbelt. If the person was not wearing a seatbelt, then it would be a different story. The opposite reaction is caused by inertia in our case, and it will carry the person through the windshield if they're in the front seat. However, if they're in the back seat, the damage can be more catastrophic because after the initial action of slamming the brakes, 
the person in the back seat will fly forward and crash into the seat in front of them. This will crush the driver or passenger and likely kill them. So we've been saying impulse a lot, and the definition of impulse is having either a small force over a big period of contact time or a big force over a very small period of contact time. In relation to our project, impulse is when a seatbelt stops you from hitting the airbag with as much force as you would without one. This is because it slows you down before you hit the airbag. A seatbelt also restrains you from hitting the chair, which is much harder than the belt. Before the seatbelt locks out, it slows down your body before stopping you completely. Impulse comes hugely into play with seatbelts. Rather than being thrown out of your seat and slamming into the back of the hard seat in front of you, or even the dashboard, or even the steering wheel, a seatbelt can slow you down. As you hit the seatbelt before it locks out, it moves forward with your body, which causes a lesser force over a greater amount of time, saving you and the person in front of you their life. The law of conservation of momentum states that momentum cannot be created or destroyed unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. In a car crash, a seatbelt acts as an unbalanced force as the car continues to move. The seatbelt stops your body by locking out if you hit it too fast. When two cars crash into each other, that's most often considered an elastic collision. The two cars will hit each other and bounce away on impact. An elastic collision is defined as a collision where there is no net loss of kinetic energy in the system resulting from the collision. The system would, in this case, be defined as the two cars that are colliding. The total kinetic energy of both the cars in the system before and after the collision will be equal, as opposed to inelastic collision where the two objects colliding would hit and stick. In an inelastic collision, the system would be defined as a singular object, and the total amount of kinetic energy after the collision would be greater than that before the collision because of the outside force, or the other object in the collision. Car crashes are generally elastic collisions because the two cars hit each other and bounce off, rather than sticking together. This issue is so relevant to New Hampshire because we are the only state in the U.S. with no law requiring a seatbelt after age 18. Nationally, about 90% of people wear seatbelts, but in New Hampshire, only 69% of people wear seatbelts. In nine years, 2003 to 2012, New Hampshire had 919 deaths in motor vehicle crashes. This fact is to do mainly with the lack of seatbelts. One of the two main reasons people don't wear seatbelts is because when they're in the back seat, they don't think they need to wear them, and because they find them uncomfortable when they lock. It's a definitely needed to wear a seatbelt in the back seat because if the brakes are slammed, you will fly forwards and crash through the window shield if you're sitting in the middle seat, or if you're sitting in one of the other two seats, you will slam into the chair in front of you, obtain serious injuries like broken limbs or necks, and crush the seat in front of you and kill the driver slash passenger. We came up with an idea that would reduce the uncomfortableness of seat belts when they lock. We figured that if we created a padded and more cushy seat belt, it would not only reduce the uncomfortableness, but it would act as a crumple zone and provide a smaller force and over an extended period of time and therefore reduce the impulse that you would hit the lock seat belt with. In conclusion, seatbelts save lives, and while there is no law in New Hampshire that forces people over 18 to wear seatbelts, it is a wise decision to do so anyways. Just because there's no law against it doesn't mean that it's safe. As you've already seen, not wearing a seatbelt can cause a lot of harm. It is in your best interest and the best interest of those around you to always buckle up. The national average seatbelt usage is around 89.6%, according to the National Highway and Traffic Safety Administration, so if you're part of the 10.4% that goes unbuckled, you could get seriously injured. Wear your seatbelt, stay alive.